I'm, you know, laying in the ICU, having a revelation that I don't really want to die, that nobody has ever taught me how to live. Would someone please, please just teach me how to live because I don't know how to do that. Well, I'm Autumn Hope, and some of my earliest memories are of being introduced to sex as a small child. And that began something that continued on for the next eight years of my life um, until at the age of 13, I became pregnant. And um, I was able to hide it for about four to five months and then kind of the lid just blew off of um, the whole secret. I was sent away to a maternity home um, and there I made the decision to place that child for adoption. I was emphatically told that this is a secret and I was not to tell anyone. That just added to the guilt and the shame that was already there. I was not told that I was going to grieve him as if um, someone had died. You know, how do you really heal from that? And I just thought, maybe if I can get to church, then God will help me. And about two, three weeks in, I went down to the altar and I literally spilled the beans to the pastor's wife. <laughs> And she didn't blink, she didn't bat an eye, she didn't gasp, she didn't say, oh my gosh, she didn't. She just smiled and grabbed my hands and said, we're gonna pray right now. And she prayed that God would restore my life and that one day I would have a husband and children of my own. But I immediately knew I have a safe person to go to but the, the despair did not lift. And I had been seeing a court-ordered counselor for over a year. She walked with me through, even um, in that year, an attempted suicide. And I'm, you know, laying in the ICU, having a revelation that I don't really wanna die, but nobody has ever taught me how to live. Would someone please, Please, just teach me how to live, because I don't know how to do that. I remember getting on my hands and knees in my bedroom and just crying out to the Lord, Lord, you have got to help me. You've got to help me. And a couple days later, I go to church, and the pastor is preaching. I can't even remember what the sermon is on, but of course there's an altar call, and I go down again. And he goes down the prayer line, he's praying for people. When he got to me, he just said the word forgiveness. And it was as if he punched me in the gut. He didn't touch me, but it was like this force came and I doubled over. I began to sob and I saw the people I needed to forgive. And it kind of surprised me. And um, really shocked me because it wasn't who I thought it was and it was my parents. Two of the people were my parents. And I didn't think I was holding unforgiveness to them, but I was holding them responsible. Like, where were you? And the, it was like the Lord just said, just, you have to let them go. And then the other pers person was the person that had got me pregnant. Um, and so I just felt this release, like I just, I released them from all responsibility. And when I did, I felt like this rush of the Lord forgiving me for my part that I played in it, for, for you know, the things that I had done uh, willingly at times. And um, I just felt this rush of forgiveness. And it was really a powerful moment, but then I went home and it was like, I felt like I was back where I had, I had begun. And um, a couple of days later, I walk into church on a Sunday morning and I have all of my siblings, my younger siblings behind me, my sister and uh, 
two sisters and two brothers. And they like, they call them my little ducklings. They're following me into church. And the greeter, an older gentleman, like 65 years old, says, hi, Autumn. And right when I say hi back, wham, the power of God like hits me. I don't know how else to say it. It was almost as if I got plugged in to an electric electrical outlet, <laughs> but in a good way. Like it wasn't doing damage. It was like I just lit up all the heaviness, all the grief, all the shame, all of the um, guilt just lifted off of me in an instant. And I began to smile, the biggest smile I've ever smiled in my life, to the point where my cheeks began to hurt um, before service was over. I'm like, oh, my cheeks hurt so bad. But I was just like this bubbly person, um, bouncing around the church. Like a, I, at this point, I'm like 15 years old, um, just like a teenager that would be bubbly and joyful and saying hi to people. And I had never done that before. I had been become like this stoic, um, inability to even express emotion. And that began this journey with the Lord of um, just sharing the story of how God helped me and uh, brought me out in a supernatural way and completely began to restore my life um, to the point where kids in high school were like, what happened to you? Like, who, like, who are you? And about four days in to school, back at school, they're like, we don't know what happened to you, but we like this version better. From the time that I just felt that release of all depression, anxiety, um, guilt, and shame, that kind of set me on a path of coming out of my shell and finding out what I love to do. And um, the pastor's wife started to pull me up on stage and started to coach me. So I started leading worship. And from there, I went to ministry school and met my husband there. Uh, we got married and I now have four beautiful children. And there came a time um, in 2014, I was leading worship and I heard the Lord say, I'm making restitution. I was like, you don't owe me anything. And he said, yes, but when the enemy can't, I will. And the next day I get an email from the school of ministry that I had worked at. And they're like, hey, this lady's looking for you. And I'm like, I don't know who she is, but I'll give her a call. So I call and she's like, hey, Autumn, immediately, your birth son is looking for you. And she said, I'm a private investigator and uh, through the court system. And if now is not a good time, and I stopped her mid-sentence. And I was like, are you kidding me? I've been waiting for this for 20 years. And so she, um, she just starts laughing. She's like, well, I'm a birth mom too. And this is why I do what I do. And so she said, can I read a letter that he wrote to you? And I said, yes. And, she, and she's like, okay, I'm gonna read it. And it uh, said, dear mom, I read the letters that you wrote to me as a baby, that you were praying for me to grow up to be a man of God. I'm current, sorry. I'm currently in my second year of Bible college, and I want to meet you and be mutually encouraged by all that God has done. Love your son. And yeah. And so I was speechless. I had, like, I couldn't even, I mean, silence. And she's like, she starts laughing. She's like, well, you're gonna have a great day and I will send you the proper paperwork so we can do this legally. And she hung up the phone. Since then, he has come and visited our home. He's stayed with us for the weekend and we FaceTime like once a week. And um, actually in next week, I'll be flying out to California and he will be flying out there too, coming home for sabbatical, and we'll get to hang out. So, yeah, it's a crazy God story <laughs> where I literally got everything back. God is completely restored and has never stopped um, being good <laughs> and just continuing to extend that goodness to me, which I know that he's no respecter of person, so if he'll do it for me, he'll do it for anybody.